Tonight, dueling foreign trips from two top potential GOP candidates for 2024. Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin meeting face-to-face with Taiwan's president in Taipei, as Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is in Japan meeting that country's prime minister, and he'll be headed there as well, to Taiwan. Youngkin's trip to Taiwan coming as tensions between the U.S. and China are at an all-time high, amid growing fears that China is preparing to invade Taiwan. Out front now from Taiwan, Republican governor and potential 2024 candidate Glenn Youngkin. And, of course, Governor, I'm going to note you're at Liberty Square in Taipei, which is a major symbol of Taiwan's uh, transition to democracy and its history. And, Governor, of course, you're the sitting governor of a major state. You're seen as a top Republican presidential candidate. Uh, we've seen China retaliate against others who have chosen to visit Taiwan. I mean, just, uh, just the other day, the government sanctioned the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee for his visit. So, Governor, why do you think it is worth it to provoke China right now with this trip? Well, one of the great opportunities uh, for Virginia and I think for the United States is uh, forging even deeper relationships with trusted partners around the world. And, and Taiwan, of course, is at the top of the list, along with Japan and Korea, who I'll see later this week. And these supply chains for critical sectors and semiconductors and pharmaceuticals and automotive supply are at the heart, not just of economic activity, but, but of those sectors that we need to make sure that we are redomiciling the supply chain and, and centering it on, trust, on trusted partners. And so that's why I'm so excited to be here. I had an extraordinary meeting yesterday with President Tsai. Um, we agreed that we would both work personally to further the relationship between Virginia and Taiwan. We launched a, a, a new trade office that will open up here in Taiwan to do exactly that. Uh, it's been an extraordinary trip so far. Now, according to the Washington Post, Governor, the highly sensitive documents that we all now know about that leaked from the Pentagon show that Taiwan is highly vulnerable to a Chinese air attack. And a top Washington think tank had warned that the U.S. military, uh, in the event of a war involving China's Navy, would be crippled. So where do you stand on this? Do you think it is important that the United States make it clear that it is willing to back Taiwan militarily? Well, the relationship between uh, Taiwan and the United States, of course, is, is one that uh, for years has been at the heart of the one China policy. Um, you know, as, as a governor, I am deeply focused on the economic opportunities here. Um, but of course, President Tsai has so many other, so many other uh, deep, deep concerns about uh, their future. And that's why I think building these relationships that we have uh, really embarked on with uh, a state like Virginia are at the heart of their economic future. You know, they have, they have carved out such an extraordinary leadership role in some of these key industries, semiconductors clearly, but also pharmaceutical supply chains, uh, battery storage. And these are areas that I think that we can further our cooperation. You know, Virginia has been growing like crazy. We came in a little over a year ago and opened Virginia up for business, and it's been exciting to see countries like Taiwan be so interested in investing in Virginia and enhancing our partnerships. Governor, you mentioned that you're going to Korea and you're going to Japan. Uh, the Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, also a possible 2024 candidate, is also uh, visiting those countries uh, on his overseas tour. Right now, he's in Japan. Uh, Thomas Petterfee, a major Republican donor, recently said something to the Financial Times that uh, sort of stopped me in my tracks. He said he and other donors are going to stop giving money to DeSantis. And his quote, Governor, was, because of his stance on abortion and book banning, myself and a bunch of friends are holding our powder dry. Now, that's a big deal in and of itself. But Politico broke the news that after that, Butterfee gave a million dollars to your PAC, the Spirit of Virginia. Why do you think he decided to give you that money? Did you have a conversation with him? Well, what I've been really encouraged by is that both Virginians uh, and supporters from across the country are focused on what we're doing in Virginia. And, and I think we have really demonstrated that common sense solutions to some of the most challenging issues work. 
And so as we opened Virginia back up and we watched our economy grow and added back 125,000 jobs in a short period of time, as we've really uh, focused on fixing education, Virginia's overall edu high school education system, K through 12, uh, had really taken a big step back and we've got it moving in the right direction. We're back in law enforcement and we're watching our economy grow, which is opening up opportunities for all Virginians. I'm so excited to see that there are, there are supporters across the country that are focused on really helping us continue to win. We've got midterm elections this year. Right. And uh, and we're going to we're going to do everything we can to hold our house and flip our Senate. And, uh, and it's really exciting to see folks not just in Virginia supporting us. So when when someone like Thomas Petterfee does this, do, do you say you've got an open mind about running for the White House? That's clearly what they want you to do. Well, I've been very clear that that I am focused on Virginia. It's it's very humbling for a kid that, you know, 40 years ago was washing dishes and taking out trash to, to have my name tossed around in, in that in that uh, idea. But but I'm focused on Virginia and we've got a lot of work to do this year. And as I said, we've got our midterms. And so I think the track record uh, that our administration has really been demonstrating an opening up opportunity, growing jobs, addressing challenges in education, back in law enforcement. These are critical topics that I think the nation is watching. And I think we've demonstrated that we can address them and make progress very quickly. And, and I, I do. And, and I have to ask you about one other thing, and these are the things that now politics, unfortunately, in this country has too often become, which is that, you know, issues like a Bud Light boycott become uh, front and center. Uh, people close to Trump talk about it. Trump talks about it. Ron DeSantis talks about it. And so here we are. I mean, the Wall Street Journal reports two executives at Anheuser-Busch have been placed on leave after the company sponsored those Instagram posts of Dylan Mulvaney, who is a transgender influencer right. uh, who has Bud millions of followers on Instagram so and TikTok. So after now. these posts... Kid Rock, the musician, posted a video of himself shooting cases of Bud Light. And as I said, many on the right called for a boycott of the company, uh, including Governor uh, DeSantis was critical as well. So, so Governor, well, what do you think? Were these calls for a boycott of, of Bud Light coming from the right warranted? Well, if we step back and, and we just clearly recognize that the world of ESG has gone way out of bounds from its original idea. I mean, originally, uh, ESG was focused on having sound environmental policies that are good for the environment and good for companies, ha having a recognition that a diverse thought uh, team built in order to represent the best problem solving was good and having world class governance. That's what ESG was. And it is it is migrated so deep out of bounds that we do see that Companies, by taking social positions, are isolating, if, if not damaging, uh, their customers and their brand. And so this is just the reality. And if, and if we could just step back and get ESG back in the box where it belongs and, and not forcing people to make yep. a statement about the product they buy and whether they agree with it or don't. People just want to buy products that are solid products. They give them great services. They want to be able to visit theme parks without making, without making a statement. And I think this is a big moment for us to step back and try to get common sense back into this arena that yeah. we have companies that make great products and provide great services and uh, we should allow them to do that. And, and obviously, you know, environmental and social governance policies when you talk about ESG. But, Governor, to your point, obviously, theme parks, you know, I know you've got Lego coming and, and, and we're, we're talking here in the context of Disney. But. You know, as a person who, who ran one of the largest private equity firms for decades and you're talking about let businesses do what they do. Is it appropriate for governors, for people in politics to come out and make these big statements and uh, have punitive policies towards what companies do? Or should you just let the free market speak for itself? Well, I, I think that there has been a, a huge movement to put politics not just in the classroom, which we've been addressing uh, in Virginia and to get Virginia back focused on teaching our children uh, the basics of all of our history, the good and the bad, to make sure that they can read by the third grade, to focus on math. And we've seen the same movement of politics into the boardroom. And, uh, and we should just take a big step back and, and recognize that not everything needs to be politicized. And when a boardroom pre presses into political issues and social issues, um, it does create a moment for a debate. And there's nothing wrong with the debate, but companies should just recognize that there are ramifications. And, and I think Anheuser Bush has recognized that. All right, Governor, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Governor Youngkin of Virginia. Thanks so much for having me.